Hi everyone, Lillian here from Card Crafts by Lily. Today I'm going to do another tutorial using the gorgeous Moon Lake stamp set. However, instead of using the little bird image uh, that I had done before, I'm going to use the image, the goose image. Now, um, I've done three examples of this. There's one here with the single goose image, one here with the two. This is the one I'm going to do today. It's a, a mirrored image because obviously the goose only goes in one direction. So I'll show you how to do that. And the final one is with three geese and this is the uh, masking technique. Now I'm not going to show that just at the minute because I will be teaching this one in class and, and I don't just want to, to do this before I've, I've actually taught it. So, uh, excuse the status a wee bit, it's much abashed being travelled about. So, I have um, used the mirror image technique before on other cards. I've used it with this beautiful little Scotty dog um, from the Hot Diggity Dog stamp set. The one thing I will say is it's actually much, much more difficult to do it with a more solid image. This is the original image. This is the mirrored image slightly untidy around the edge is not 100% happy with that and um, it, it, it's a bit harder to do with the solid image when you put it or the stamp onto your imaging sheet it tends to slip very very slightly but we'll do it with this for now and hopefully I, I will come back to this um, another day so we start with our braring technique which I love um, anyone that's been following my blog will know how much I love my brayer so I'll just get ready to, to do that and be back with you in a moment. Okay, just to run through the braying technique very quickly with you. Um, I have done it before in the sheltering tree video, but uh, I'll do it quickly here with you and then speed it on so as not to bore you. So I've obviously got my Whisper White cardstock, perfect for ink. I have Speedball Brayer from Stampin' Up and Stampin' Up Classic Ink Pads and this one is Soft Sky. I have already re-inked it. Um, the re-inkers are really invaluable to have along with your ink pads, especially if you do a lot of sponging and brayering because it makes it very, very thirsty. So inking up your brayer, make sure to either pull it towards you or push it away from you. Don't seesaw it. That's the important thing. And make sure it's fully covered. This is a bit noisy, so you'll have to excuse me for now. And uh, I'll make it as quick as I can. Okay, so this is the soft sky, and it's obviously the sky stage. If you're just starting embraering, I recommend that you start off and work your way in. And you do it quite fast, because when you do it fast like that, it brings the ink down the cardstock. Now, the soft sky is very subtle colour. It's actually from the subtle range. So you'll not see it for uh, a minute or two but it, it will be perfect. Now because I'm used to braring I'm going to start on the cardstock a little bit and bring it down. The other important thing to remember when you're braring you must come off both sides. You cannot come off in the middle. So start and finish off the cardstock. You have to hear that clank, 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 clank. I, I've done this guy quite dark. You don't necessarily need to do it that way. Don't worry about these lines. Um, they're kind of referred to as atmospheric lines. And once the whole picture comes together, you'll see that's actually quite a nice effect. So turn it over. Close up the soft sky. Bring in the pool party for the water. And it's the same technique. Now, one thing I will explain to you. Um, as I said a moment ago, if you go fast, it makes the ink travel farther down. If you want to concentrate the colour in one space, ink up, I'll show you here, just ink up less of the brayer. Just a little bit. 
and go slower it's as simple as that and that deposits the ink in a more concentrated way onto your cardstock so Right, the next thing we need to do is get a horizon line in and, and some hills some scenery and what have you so I'll just zoom that in a little bit for you I hope that's bright enough and let's see I would want it uh, probably not quite two-thirds of the way up but just over halfway and try and put it straight now I don't have a particularly straight line in my head no I'm probably not going to be happy with that I'll try and line it up in the graph paper and do it it's easier if you're only having to use one piece of mask but because it's wider I need to use two so it's a wee bit harder to line up Hopefully that's okay. And the next thing I need is my dauber. I have one for every colour. This poor one, I don't know if you can see it, has been well abused. I actually need to get a, bring a new one in. This one has been used so much. I'm, I'm using, sorry, I'm using the Marina Mist for the horizon. Now I, I just need, I'll show you quickly, just the edge of the dauber. You don't want it the full Thing. It's just the, the edge of it that you're going to run along quite lightly. If you want to, you could mask the other side so that you've only left a narrow line. I just do it sort of freehand and hoping, hoping, hoping it's going to work out okay. Just a light, a light line across it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really do need to use another dauber. That one's a bit woolly looking now but it's okay for this one yeah then what I'll do just move the mask up a little bit that's like your horizon line there maybe moved it or put it up a wee bit higher than I intended but we'll see how it comes out it should be okay I'm just trying to show you the technique anyway so I may not be happy with the result but at least you'll still get the technique hopefully there we go so the next thing again another dauber this one is my always artichoke one this is actually a really it's, it's a funny sort of a colour I can't even describe it um, but I love it for scenery again just ink up and sort of, I kind of do this freehand. Let's see. Just rub it lightly and get a, a draw in just loosely. Kind of very soft, um, fancy hills in the background. Kind of blurred or misty or whatever. I quite like that effect. deepen that a little bit more there we go and I'll do one up let's see do one up this I'm, going, I'm actually not going to leave a break in the water here let's see what this comes out like heaven only knows because <laughs> I certainly don't let's see yeah that'll be all right <laughs> I'll bring this down because I want this to be the the forefront 
and I just try and make it a wee bit darker. I'm not sure if it's going to show on this, but let's see what that's like. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Happy enough for that. So let me get this lot tidied away. Right, now we come to the bit that you actually want to see. We can move this out of the way temporarily. This um, is a small piece of window sheet that I cut from our large window sheets. And I'm going to use this to mirror the image of the goose. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Obviously, the, the goose images are actually, I'm silly. I do need that back in. I need to stamp this first. I'm using just your ordinary memento, the tuxedo black. Um, stays on, I suppose is okay too, um, but I happen to like this one. What I'm going to do is place my first goose and then I'll know where I want to image the other one. So let's see, maybe about here. Give it a few seconds. This is just a quirk of mine, probably. Um, I like to give the ink time to settle. So there's the first one. Right. As I said, a bit too previous. Um, I'm going to use the window sheet to mirror the image. Now you need to do this quite quickly because it dries quickly. Hopefully I can talk through it while I'm doing it without making a mess. Here goes. You need to set it down straight. If it slips, it's ruined. Um, I said earlier about the more solid images being more inclined to slip than these lined images. So fingers crossed. There's the goose image. Turn it over. Roughly just with one edge down, decide where you want it very quickly. I want it there. Hold it down and then let it fall. Run your fingers over it. Do not let that move. And I have got my fingers and toes crossed and my breath held and everything else that this is going to turn out right. And I'm not going to look silly. So there we go. That's the mirrored image. That will actually clean off your window sheet. You can use it again. Now, as you can see, I'll bring it up to you a little closer. It's not as dark as the main image, but that's okay because even with the main image, I colour it in with markers just to make it pop out a little bit. So it's still quite a clean, clear image. So I'll be able to work with that. So we'll get on to, to colouring it in and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'll just tidy up first and come back. Actually, I've changed my mind, which uh, would be totally like me. I decided to add a little more detail to it, so bear with me. Hopefully this will turn out okay. You need to clean this off now very well for the next part that I'm going to do. So, excuse me while I clean it, I'm giving it a double check. Make sure that little bird is completely cleaned off because I don't want it in the image. What I want to do is continue the foliage. I have done this on another video, so you may already have seen this. Okay, let's see how that turns out. Okay, as I said um, before, I need 
to bring in the image of the piece a little bit stronger. So I'm using my basic black uh, stamp and write marker. Double ended marker as you've seen before, a paintbrush end and a pen end. So I'm going to use the pen end and just bear with me while I take a minute or two to do this. Previously I'd used Sahara Sand on the geese. This time I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try a bit of crumb cake and I'm going to use the brush end this time. So fingers crossed. Let's see how this turns out. colour it in completely now, um, just sort of dash it in and I do leave little white bits, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to try and follow the line of the image, this is sweeping round slightly so that's what I do with my marker. Oops, I went up too high there, I didn't mean to do that but not to worry, it will be grand. And touch it in with a little bit of my white gel pen. This is all available on my Stamping Up shop. The details you'll be able to get into the shop via my my blog. Oh, you can't see my blog because I've zoomed it in. You'll see it later anyway. Not to worry. Let's concentrate on the important stuff. Bit of the white gel pen. Obviously, the, the image behind the duck in here is actually blue from the brayering. So I just touch, let's get the ink out, I think it's starting to run dry. Touch it in a little bit to bring it out and hide the blue with the white gel pen. I think it kind of brings it to life slightly. I put a little bit of highlight on the goose body as well. Not too much, try not to overdo it the same on this side. Let's see. I actually want to bring this back in so I'm going to use the pen. Mm -hmm. Tiny little bit here and there. And that's that. I think that's not too bad. If I decide different later, I'll sort it out. Now for the bird, I've decided on the, the current um, in colours, the 2014, yes, 2014, 2016 in colours, and the Lost Lagoon and Hello Honey. So I want to use that for our little feathered friend. Let me see what I want to do first. This I'm going to do up around his eye. sure about that. I might come back to that later. I'll leave that for now. 
for now I'll continue with all our foliage and let's see let me decide what colours I want okay I've decided to use the early espresso to define the branches a bit it's it's not as dark as the black I think it's just a wee bit softer I'm using the old olive to start off with on the foliage and then I'll build it up um, all the details, as per all my videos, all the details of the dimensions and the colours used will be on my blog anyway. So, let's get started. Just scratch that in lightly, just to bring it back out again. And that's really all I need that for, I think, for now. I'm going to use the old olive. I'll uh, use the pen end and see how I get on. Hmm, that's it's a nice green, but it's not dark enough for me. But I will colour it in because all I need to do is scratch it over with a darker green. I think to to bring it out a little bit. And I'll use the mossy meadow for that. Just literally give it a bit of a scratch. I don't colour it in. I just scratch it down. Like that. I'm going to basically do the same for the rest of the foliage here. I'm going to start with the lighter, go with the darker and colour the flowers in. So bear with me. Bring my, let's see the black one back in I think. What I want to do is change these so they're not, they don't look all the same. So I work with what is there already. Like these, just define them a little bit more. bit of black scratch up even down the leaves does no harm and I'm gonna all right sorry about that with a temporary malfunction with the video all sorted now so we're back again um, if I remember I was adding in some extra little pieces here just to make the images not or, or to make them a, a little bit different um because obviously the stamped image <coughs> every time you duplicate it it's just all the same let's see Okay, and in the white gel pen, just give them a wee flash to get rid of the blue that's in the, the back. Right. 
Fine, we need to do um, the rest of this foliage, so I'll do this as quick as I can. Pacific Point and Merlin Mambo I think will do greatly. more in to make it a bit more random and let's see some yellow uh, hello honey again to take away the blue in the back there we go and I think now we'll just try and fill in this bit of the sort of grassy bank bit. I'm going to use the mossy meadow and this time I'm going to use a sponge. I know this is a bit messier but uh, these are Stampin' Up! sponges. I cut them into quarters and just nip it. Uh, it's gone dark here a wee sec. Right. I say I cut it into quarters and just hold it like that. Now, a bit messy on the the old nails, but I think it's a better effect. I'm going to actually use my nails to dig it in. It gives a bit of contrast. So let's see how we get on with this. I'm just sort of dabbing it rather than rubbing it. in here to sort of bring the bank in a bit more. It will take out some of your foliage if if it, that takes away from it then you can just add it back in by highlighting it a little bit. Um, at least that works for me. <laughs> um, everybody's different. You may have a different technique, a different way of doing that, and do feel free to share that with me. I'm always willing to to learn, but yeah, that's all right. I'm happy enough with that. Okay, okay. Now, what I'll do is just bring a little bit more. Let's see, a little bit of the white, as I said. Oh, here we go again. Just a wee flash of light in, I think sometimes helps it. Don't know why. Um, I, I don't know anything about art, so this is always only my opinion. Um, you, you will have your own way of doing this. There, I'm kind of happy. Enough with that, and we flash on that too. I think. Um, I think that little bird speak needs a bit of something. Let's see. I'm going to use Tangelo Twist and just the tiniest. Let's see. I don't know if you can even really, ah, oh, you can just about see that. That's just me being fussy. There we go. Oh, I suppose you could do these as well. Yeah, that looks better. I quite like that. Now what we need is a gel pen just to um, bring in some water. So just kind of scratch it across and lightly. You're not actually drawing anything in, just kind of lightly to make the effect of of water a little bit. A couple of squiggles, we don't need to overdo it. There we go. And give that a wee second or two to dry. 
and I'll get my Marina Mist dauber. I just want to roughen up the sort of surface of the water, but I want to take most of that off now. Let's see, I'll start up here. Just a bit, just a bit. It's like cloud cover or the, the hills coming down, whatever. It just needs to be shaded to give it a wee bit of depth, I think. I could be wrong. A little bit maybe under the, the geese. Not another wee. Yeah, there I think. Ah, that's better. Mm -hmm. I think that's about that bit done. I think I'm happy with that. So, move on to the next bit. Okay, just to finish the card off, I am going to use a uh, basic black cardstock. And I'll take, I just like to, to keep it quite simple um, and let the, the picture, the image speak for itself. I've got the half inch circle punch and I just put a tiny bit of the corner in and nip it and try to keep it to the same kind of depth all round all each four sides. Then bit of Tombow glue. Um, I'm a big fan of the, the Tombow. A lot of the demos are now into the, the fast fuse. Um, if I'm honest, I haven't even got using it yet. I thought I'd ordered it and I end up, I'd only ordered the refill. Silly me. So I need to order the proper fast fuse to try it out myself before I can Pass that information on to my customers. So I hope you can see this okay. Let's get this down. Line it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. See if there's a wee bit of wriggle time with the, the tumble that I always need because I'm rubbish at this part. Looks it looks nice when it's framed up, doesn't it? And just to finish that off, I'm just going to put some of the, the neutral sprouts on it. Um, I need to find one obviously that I have four of, so I'm going to use this one. I think this is a lovely card for anybody, but it, it's um, a particularly good masculine card, I think. go. Oops, Daisy. And the last one. And that's basically it. The only thing that's left to do is obviously the, the insert, but uh, that's the, the technique for now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm just going to, as I'm talking, just put a wee flash of white in these. I always spot something that I want to change. There we go. And I'm happy with that. I, as I say, I hope you've enjoyed it. If there's anything in um, my tutorial that I haven't explained very well, just, just drop me a line. Drop me a comment anyway. I do love to hear from you. And as I say, pop on over to my blog. I'm going to put the um, the dimensions and the materials and everything else. And my shop is there. I would love to be your demonstrator. And as I say, if there's anything I can do, any questions, just let me know. And I'll do my best to help. So the details is cardcrafts by lily.wordpress.com. I'll put the details onto, onto this video as well. So thank you very much for popping by. And until next time. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.